This is part 10 of a series of videos on using Mathematica for ordinary differential equations. We've recently been considering this particular initial value problem for an autonomous differential equation. In recent videos, we're going to consider it in this video. I'm hoping to set myself up to consider lots of other examples, starting with video 11. We'll see if we can reach that goal or not. In order to be able to consider lots of examples, I'm trying to continue the modularity in my Mathematica programming that I started in the last video to help us make what you might call ideal animations of slope fields and phase lines. And by making it more modular, that gives me more flexibility to hopefully be able to apply the mathematic code to lots of different examples. But here we're considering the same example as we considered in videos 5, 8, and 9. The Mathematica content of this video, however, is pretty challenging. I'll explain it as well as I can in the short amount of time that I have. You're going to for sure want to go back and watch videos 8 and 9 if you haven't yet to understand what's going on here. Um, it's real important that you watch those. Same initial value problem again. We are again modularizing our code to break it down into simpler pieces to certainly make it more flexible to help us consider, consider other examples and hopefully make it more understandable, though again it's going to be difficult. Is it ideal? Well, I put ideal with a question mark. It's pretty good, but maybe not completely ideal. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and run all the code here, the last line of code. In fact, I've got a bunch of different lines of code. The manipulate, that creates the animation. Let's look at the animation and talk about ways that it is flexible and ideal. All right, so again, uh, let's look at the differential equation again, quick. You should pause the video and write this down if you haven't written it down before. The right-hand side function f of y is 1 fourth y times 3 minus y. That's going to be important to remember that. All right, let's look at the picture here. Got the slope field on the left, and we've got the graph of the f of y function on the right, which is a quadratic function with a negative y squared coefficient, so it opens downward. How is this code flexible? Well, one element of flexibility that I put in here is the a, b, t1, and t2. a is the left endpoint for the y interval, which is vertical on the, on the graph on the left and horizontal on the graph of the right. I can make that smaller, for example. You see that changing in the vertical direction on the left and the horizontal direction on the right. I can make the b, the right endpoint for y, also change. I can make it bigger. So you can make both of those change. I'll go back more toward the defaults now. All right. Um, T1 and T2 are the left and right endpoints for time. Now, you don't see time on the graph on the right. You just have to imagine it. But you do see uh, T for the graph on the left, the slope field. I can make T1 smaller and T2 bigger to change that graph as well. I'll also go back to the defaults on that one. More importantly are y0 and little b. y0 is the initial value of y that's initially set at 2 here, and little b is the right endpoint of the time interval that goes starts at negative 8 and goes up to little b. Let's go ahead and play the animation here. Let's let little b increase so you can watch what happens. You see the solution curve on the left in the slope field following the slope field as time going by, goes by, and you can see at t equals 0, y does equal 2. The y-intercept there is 2. In the graph of the right, you see a blue dot moving along the horizontal y-axis toward the right as time increases, headed toward 3. You also see something you didn't see in the last video. I added something. You see big gray dots at 0 and 3. Those two numbers, 0 and 3, correspond to what are called equilibrium points on this horizontal y-axis, this phase line it's called they correspond to the values of y that make f of y zero. Remember, f of y was 1 fourth y times 3 minus y. That's going to be zero, and y is zero, or y is three. That, again, is the equilibrium points on that phase line. They correspond to equilibrium solutions in the slope field. If I set y zero to be three, you see a solution curve that's a constant function. Its graph is a horizontal line in the, in the slope field, the slope marks at y equals 3 are all horizontal. In the phase line, the blue dot is staying on top of the gray dot. It's not moving as time goes by. It's stationary. It's an equilibrium point. That equilibrium point is what's called a sink. We saw that if y0 was 2 or anything between 0 and 3, not equal to 0 or 3, that the blue dot is going to move to the right and toward y equals 3 as time goes by. 
if I pick y0 to be oh, 04, for example, if it lets me here. Now watch it. Now the blue dot is moving to the left as time increases corresponding to the solution curve that passes through the y-axis at y equals 4, decreasing toward the equilibrium solution at y equals 3. This blue dot is showing you that in the phase line, the y-coordinate of your solution curves are heading towards 3 as time increases. That is what the blue dot is keeping track of, by the way. At any given moment in time, the blue dot is keeping track of the y-coordinate of your solution curve at that moment in time. In this case, just a little bit bigger than 3 is the y-coordinate. It's the first coordinate here, it's the second coordinate over here. Okay, how else is this animation ideal? Well, you, didn't, you don't see any vertical asymptote here, whereas in video number 9 we had a vertical asymptote, so I got rid of that with exclusion, so that makes this a little bit more ideal. Also, I did set it up with kind of some complicated coding in such a way that we only see the piece of the graph uh, that includes the time equals zero piece, not the piece to the other side of the vertical asymptote. I, wanna, I don't want to consider that piece. That's going to work if y0 is negative too, by the way. Um, you see, again, the piece that contains, uh, trying to make y0 bigger here, but not zero, contains the t equals zero vertical axis intercept. This one's got a vertical asymptote, but we don't see the piece of the graph to the other side of the vertical asymptote. I don't want to see that. Okay, so now, with the rest of the time that we have here, we'll try to, as quickly as we can, understand this code better, but I don't expect you're going to understand it completely, even if you've followed my videos to this point, especially with the solution plot stuff. I did some kind of complicated stuff there. Um, first of all, this enters the function, the right-hand side function, for that autonomous differential equation. It's independent of t, that's why it's called autonomous. D solve value, as we've seen before, uh, returns solutions to differential equations and initial value problems. If you just have a y here instead of a y of t, it returns the solution as what's, as what's called a pure function. I'm storing that pure function in this symbol. It does depend on y0, y which is the initial value of y, so I put a y0 with an underscore there. Once you've entered that code, I guess it was already entered, you can evaluate the pure function at the value of t. You can see the formula for the solution. That's the formula for the solution. It defines the solution function. I did some other modularization here, a lot of modularization. Okay. Um, ultimately, it's the, it has the benefit of making this code down here a lot easier to understand once you understand the pieces. Once you understand what slope field does, solution plot does, uh, ty label, what is that? That's this thing right here. I use text style, large, black, italic in a lot of my labeling of my axes, and so I decided to take uh, the situation where I labeled the horizontal axis with T and the vertical axis with Y and put it all, store that information in something I called TY label, and I'm, then I'm using TY label down there. In a similar way, I've got also a, let's see, where is it? Um, up in here, actually, some other code. Y of Y label, what is that label? That labels axes uh, y and f of y. That's why I call it y f of y label. That's how you should read that. Y f of y label. That's stored in that. That comes from this code right here. Storing this labeling in that variable. I also use this kind of stuff a lot. Frame arrow false, axes arrow true, etc. I'm storing that information in this variable called axes thick no frame ticks. Kind of fun names here. This is code that creates a function that I'm calling slope field. What does slope field have for its, input? its inputs? It has the function on the right hand side, the f of y in this case, has the t interval and the y interval, and then uses vector plot, which is a built in Mathematica function to create the slope field. Slope field is not a built in Mathematica function. I'm creating my own Mathematica function there. Let me skip over the solution plot for the moment. Uh, let's, let's see, what does f plot do? That plots the right-hand side function with the plot command. Makes it orange and thick. Labels the axes y, f of y. Uh, let me skip over this one for the moment here also. Point plot, what does that do? That creates, with graphics and point, it creates gray dots at those equilibrium points that come from this thing, and also combining that with transpose. Don't worry about how that works. And it also creates a moving blue dot 
as the little b changes based on this code here, which is also kind of complicated. But all that code is being used in a modular kind of way down here. It makes this code down here more readable. All right, we've been 10 minutes at this. We've got a few minutes to try to understand this a little bit better in some ways. I guess I didn't have to cut that out. Perhaps the next easiest thing to understand is what's going on here with the y equal to green point. So I hope I didn't. Okay, here we go. What does solve do? Solve solves equations. And so if I type solve f of y equals equals zero, comma y, that solves the equation f of y equals zero for y. Finds the equilibrium points at zero and three. When I do y slash dot in front of that, that stores those solutions in a list of two values, zero and three. Slash dot is called the replace all operator. I'm going to replace the y with the solutions that come from solve, which are called rules, which I won't get into. This syntax creates a list whose entries are those solutions, those equilibrium points. And then um, <clears throat> this code down here, I, I store that in this function here, and then I use that function down here. By the way, when you put the underscore here, that treats the f here as a local variable, so to speak. f does have a name outside of that function. It's this thing, but it doesn't matter that I've defined that outside this y equilibrium points function because internally here it treats f as a local variable and it would allow me, for example, to use other functions with this y equilibrium points as I will in future videos. Doing this stuff right here uh, creates, I can just actually copy and paste this to sh out here to show you what it does. That creates a list of points, 0, 0, and 3, 0 that I can plot with point. Those were the equilibrium points. Uh, should we take the time to go into any of this other stuff further? I think I'll end the video here in, in the next 30 seconds and just say that this is still not quite ideal. It's still not quite as flexible as I want it to be because I have this 4 thirds log of y0 minus 3 over 3 in there. That happens to be the location of the vertical asymptote of the solution function. It's where the bottom is 0. Um, there are ways to try to make that more ideal, to not have to modify this for other examples. And I tried those ways for this video, but it still wasn't quite working out nicely. But I'm going to try to fix that for hopefully future videos to try to avoid the use of that. However, this other stuff there, which is kind of complicated involving which and min uh, and exclusions, denominator, that stuff is more complicated and confusing. Um, you could spend a little time trying to understand that. I, I'm not claiming it's ideal. It did make it work in this example. I'm going to try fiddling with this stuff for future videos, and that's the end of this one.